Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa from the Bolinas Library and today we're going to read some books, sing some songs, and do a few activities. And today we're going to be talking about water. And water is an amazing thing in our lives and in fact we can't live without it. It's everywhere. It's in us and it's something we need to survive and live off of. So we're going to celebrate water today by starting off with a book. Let's start off with this first book. It's called This Raindrop Has a Billion Stories to Tell, written by Linda Ragsdale, illustrated by Shumali Vasani with permission from Flower Pot Press. Here we go. This raindrop has billions of stories to tell. In fact, this raindrop has been here since time began. Oh my goodness. This tiny drop could be the same drip once flipped off the tip of a pterodactyl's wing. This drop could have plopped on the top of a T-Rex or been tossed from the locks of a meandering mammoth. Why, this drop could have roared in the crash of the first ocean wave. Wow. Maybe this drip shifted sediment that sculpted spectacular canyons and caverns. This raindrop may have tippy-tapped on rooftops in cities and suburbs all over the world. It might have tumbled off a towering ledge and been whisked away in a wishing waterfall. Maybe it hovered in fluffy clouds stuffed with precipitation in anticipation of a place to rain down. Perhaps it draped over peaks and pikes on parts of the planet unknown. It's really getting around. Some days it may have simply slipped into the scene, cuddled as a puddle in a muddy mess. This drip is a master of mysteries. Its magical molecules morph into thin air, then shapeshift back into something new, like a single drop of dew in the morning. Do you ever get up super early and go outside and see little tiny dew drops on the plants? Why, water has so many stories to spill from shore to shore. It has shipped Poets and pirates, kings and queens, astronauts, adventurers, friends, fishermen, sailors, soldiers, and seekers. Wow. Water is a witness to the wonders of the world. It is a source that flows in the oceans, air, and atmosphere. It is home and habitat for furry and fin, fin, finned friends. It runs in rivers and veins, through bodies of land, and through limbs and leaves of people and plants of all kinds. Raindrops are fully versed in the sagas and secrets of travelers throughout time. They connect everything from then to now. Next time a raindrop falls, catch it, look, Listen, imagine, it has billions of stories to tell. The end. So water has been around for a long time and we don't know exactly when water became a part of this planet. And some scientists believe that asteroids brought water to Earth millions of years ago, while others believe water has been here for billions of years since our planet was formed. But no matter when water came to Earth, one thing is for certain, and that we've been recycling and reusing water for a long time now. And we have a cycle of water that goes around and around, and the water comes down in rain, and we collect it in big bodies of water, and then it evaporates up, and then gets stuck in condensation, and then comes back down as precipitation. Here's a funny little song so we can remember this cycle. 
Water travels in a circle, yes it does. Water travels in a circle, yes it does. It goes up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, then comes down as precipitation, yes it does. And those are some pretty big words. But what we want to remember is that water is very precious because it's the same stuff that we're getting to use over and over again. So we have to be very careful and kind to our water. What are some ways in which you can thank your water and take care of your water and make sure we don't use too much of it or we don't pollute it? Are there, are there some ways that you can think of? Well, if you can get together with someone in your house, you can make some little raindrops and you can put around in your house to remind you because sometimes we forget, sometimes even adults forget certain things that we can do around our house to make sure that we take care of our water. Like when we're turning on the sink to wash our hands or our dishes, don't just let it run and run and run and run. Get a little drop and then turn it off and then soap up or soap or wash your dishes. Are you helping wash your dishes at home yet? And you can wash your dishes and then with the soap and then turn the water back on just a little bit when you're ready to rinse it off. So that's one way to save water. Another way to save water is to not use sprinklers in your yard or think about plants that don't take a lot of water or think about helping your mom fill up the washing machine to, so it's a full load so we don't just wash two pairs of socks so we can really make sure we save water wherever we can and to not make sure that no chemicals or pollution gets in our water. Next we're going to hear from our good friends over at the learning bus Alejandra and Maribel and they're going to read a book for you too with permission from Macmillan Press. So let's see what they have to say. Hi, my name is Alejandra. Hola, mi nombre es Maribel. And we are The, the Learning, Learning Bus. Bus. We're so happy to be here with you today and we have a very special book to share with you. We are Water Protectors, written by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Michaela Goad. And in this book, we will learn about water and why we should care for it. We are water protectors. Water is the first medicine Nakomi stole to me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourished us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison the plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now, the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. 
We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones, The four-legged ones, the two-legged ones, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes. The earth, we are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit. Nokomi stole me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are the stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. The end. Friends, so we're going to be playing a song um, in honor of Mother Earth and Mother Water. Um, and if you have any, any instruments in your house, or if you just want to dance to the song, that would be great. Um, and the song is called Mother, I Hear You. Mother, I Hear You. Okay. <laughs>
goodness, what is that aquí? Thank you so much, Alejandra and Mary Bell, for sharing with us today. That was a wonderful book, and I hope that all of us can continue working together to make sure that we respect water and we realize how precious it is on this world. In this book called The Water Walker, written and illustrated by Joanne Robertson with, by Second Story Press, is about a woman, Nicomus Josephine Mandamin, an Ojibwe grandmother who walks all over to spread the word about how important our water is and how we must protect it for our future generations because water is life. Let's see what happens in this story. Nekomis loved Nibi, and Nibi is the Ojibwe word for water. And Nibi loved Nekomis. Rain or shine, hot or cold, calm or wild. Every morning, like the women in her family before her, Nokimus hopped out of bed and before doing anything else she sang, Ichi miigwich nibi for the life you give to every living thing on earth. I love you. I respect you. But one day a wise Ojima told her, In my lifetime the day will come when an ounce of water costs more than an ounce of gold. What are you going to do about it? <gasps> oh no. Like an arrow, his words pursed Nokimus' heart. She looked around. She saw how people were disrespecting the water, wasting it, and making it unfit for life. Day turned to night, and nights turned to weeks, and Nokomis remembered the Ogima's words. A few moons went by, and then one night, Nokomis had a dream. Early next morning, Nokomis called her sister and Kwiwak Nichis over for tea to talk about their responsibility to protect Nibi. She had all her friends over, and they're talking about what they're going to do. And four days later, Nokomis and the Mother Earth Water Walkers, as they came to be known, found themselves standing on the side of the road wearing sneakers. Nokimus carried a copper pail full of niba, nibi in one hand and a migizi staff on the other. If no one noticed nibi, maybe they would notice the water walkers. Maybe someone would ask why they carry nibi in their copper pail. Maybe someone would be moved to protect nibi too. Nokimus and the Mother Earth water walkers walked around all the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. They walked every spring for seven years. They prayed and sang to Nibi. They left Sima in every lake, river, stream, and puddle they met. They got up before the birds and went to bed in Nokimus Gizis rose. Nokimis was interviewed on television, in newspapers, and on radio. She even was in the movies. And, but big companies, politicians, and even her next-door neighbors still did not feel the urgency to protect Nibi. What more can I do, she wondered. A year later, over the Atlantic Ocean, a friend had a dream which she soon shared with Nokomis as soon as she woke up. Nokomis shared the dream with all the people they had met during her previous walks. Word spread fast across Turtle Island. Everyone began to prepare. Next thing you know, there were Quiwak standing at each salt nibi surrounding Turtle Island with a copper pail in one hand and a Megizi staff in the other, wearing sneakers. In the west, Nokimis and the Mother Earth water walkers set off from the Pacific Ocean saying, I will do it for the water. Every year after the devastating oil spill, Nokimis and the water walkers set off from the Gulf of Mexico singing to Nibi and praying for healing for Nibi. Water, we love you. We thank you. We respect you. Next, Nakimis and the water walkers set off from the Atlantic Ocean in the east. At the send-off, they walked barefoot on the rocks and the beautiful petroglyphs and sang to Nibi. Putting on their sneakers, they started out on the migration trail. Their ancestors traveled hundreds of years before. In the frigid north, the ice was five feet thick. Nakimis and the wa Mother Earth water walkers put Sima on the frozen Nibi, singing their thanks, respect, and love. And here's a wonderful picture of the, all of their adventures and their journeys. 
Salt water tears filled the Mother Earth water walker's eyes as the four salt Nibi met Lake Superior. One day the four salt Nibi will be reborn as clouds and be carried home on the winds in the comas. Nakamis went through three knees and eleven pairs of sneakers walking for Nibi. She got their knee, her knees replaced and is at home resting up, taking the time to surf online for new sneakers. Every morning she puts down her sima for Nibi and sings her gra gratitude and she prays people wake up and realize that without Nibi there is no life. And she continues to wonder, what are you going to do about it? The end. And what will we do together? And what will you do with your family? And no matter how young or how old, it's always important to respect and to learn how to take care of our water and to remind others, because sometimes we forget how important it is to do our part. Now let's sing a song and we can use our fingers as pretending that they are the water drops. Ready? Drip, drop, plop, plop, drip, drop, plop, plop. Thirsty animals, thirsty plants, water for me and water for you. Drip, drop, plop, drip, drop, plop, drip, drop, plop, plop, drip, drop, plop, plop. Thank you, water. Thank you, water, you've been here before. Come back again, drip, drop, plop, drip, drop, plop. Let's read another book called Water Can Be by Laura Purdy Salas, illustrations by Violeta de Bija. And then this book with permissions from Millbrook Press. And let's see what this book has to say about water. Water is water, it's puddle, pond, sea. When springtime comes splashing, the water flows free. Water can be a tadpole hatcher, a pi picture catcher, otter feeder, downhill speeder, garden soaker, valley cloaker, thirst quencher, kid drencher. Drink cooler, ooh, rainbow jeweler. Have you seen any rainbows lately? Homemaker, ooh, it's a home for all these beautiful creatures in the sea. A shipbreaker, uh-oh. Water is water, it's fog, frost, and sea. When autumn comes chasing, water can be a cloud fluffer, a fire snuffer, a school drinker, a bruise shrinker. Look. She's putting ice on the bruise and it's getting better from the ice. Salmon, salmon highway, an eagle flyway, a storm creator, a decorator. Oh, it's decorating with snowflakes, a woodchuck warmer, a snowman former. Water is water. It's ice, snow, and sea. Now go and discover what else can it be? I never knew water could be so many different things. And what's cool about this book is in the very back, there is a list with some more information about each page that we just talked about so you can learn a little bit more about what is happening with the water. Like the otter feeder is a healthy river full of fish. And in order for otters to survive, they need a river that's healthy so that the fish can be healthy and then the otters can swim up and down it to collect their food. Now, here's an activity we can do. <laughs> we are gonna make a little fish. And this fish, here's, I have two of them. They kind of look like carrots, <laughs> but this is supposed to be a fish. And you can make your fish, what Every way you want. There's so many different ways to make a fish. And I thought we would make one today that kind of has an accordion fold. And we're going to make a fish that can swim in our clean river. We want to make sure that we keep our waterways clean so that we can have healthy, healthy fish to swim in. And with for this, 
project, you're going to need a strip of paper and you're going to cut a long rectangular shape and then you're going to have two other smaller pieces of paper that you can cut out a bigger fin for the back and little fins for the side. And then you want to take your main, your big piece of paper and do a little accordion fold back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. And then you can decorate it however you want and some eyes and you could put some glitter on it to make it a shiny fish. I just did mine simple today to show you, but you can make yours as wild and beautiful as you want. And then you can glue on the little fins and unfold your accordion and you have your little fish swimming in the sea. Thank you so much for joining us today as we read some books and sang some songs and thought about a couple ways that we can take care of our water. There are lots of books about water in our library, lots of books about our beautiful earth, and books about everything in it. I hope to see you soon at the library to check out lots more books. And until then, we'll see you later. Bye.